Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands, please. Let's glorify Jesus this morning some more. We have been thanking him, but it is never enough. We can thank him some more. We can give him more glory and praise. He deserves it all. 40 years of divine help. 40 years of favors. 40 years of open doors. Give God praise. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning at this hour of visitation. Thank you because you visit us by your word. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Please get seated. And welcome your neighbor again to this land flowing with milk and honey. Humbly, I want to appreciate my father, the apostle of this commission, Bishop David Oedipo, for this undeserved privilege, not just for standing on this altar to bring God's word, but for the relentless impute into my humble life the last 40 years that this mandate was received by him. As a young, tender, timid, and shy teenager, the first time, just a few days after I was privileged to meet God's servant in a fellowship where I was praying, he tapped me and said to me, you will share this evening. And without hesitation, I said, no. No. It was a very blunt no. I don't know how he felt that day, but since then, he has not stopped tapping me. <laughs> go. Go. And most time, I go reluctantly, but in my reluctance, I receive divine help. And till today, even this morning, I'm here, permit me to say reluctantly, but with the backing of the grace of God upon his life, because I'm a partaker of the grace of God upon his life. Sam, I deeply appreciate you again for all of your investment and all of the blessing. I appreciate our mommy also for creating a home for us, a homely atmosphere for us to serve. To God be the glory forever. I'm assigned this morning to teach on the subject caption, Obedience, Gateway to Maximizing the Blessedness of Our Promised Land. Gateway to Maximizing the Blessedness of Our Promised Land. If you want to put it in a shorter form, we can call it making the most of the land. And our text is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 11. Please permit me to do a fairly long reading of this passage. Beginning from verse 12 to 15 and then 22 to 28. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Of chapter 11 from verse 12. Describing the land, a land which the Lord thy God carried for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. If somebody believes it, say amen. Yeah. Not only for a while, but from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass. Look at the condition. The promise, the condition. Verse 12, the promise. Verse 13, the condition. It shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments. So that land has commandments. It's not a lawless land. Which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Immediately as you obey, I will give you the rain, 
When will he give to you? When you obey. He will give you the rain of your land in due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in the corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in your field for your cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. Is somebody else saying amen there? Yeah. And verse 22. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, all, not some, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then, Will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you? And ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Yeah. What more, every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Yeah. From the river, from the wilderness, and Lebanon from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the utmost sea shall be your coast. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he has said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you will obey the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you this day, and a cause if you will obey, if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Beginning from chapter 8 all through to chapter 11, among other passages, we saw the blessedness of the land unlimited, inexhaustible, but governed by rules. Governed by rules. It's not a lawless land. It's not a lawless kingdom. And how well you keep the law determines how much you enjoy the land. I'd like to repeat that again. How well you keep the law determines how much you enjoy the land. Enjoyment of the land is not based on prayer. It's based on obedience. Obedience is number one factor for your enjoyment in the land. So rather than looking for promises to claim in the land, seek instructions to obey. Seek instructions to obey. The blessing of the Lamb is in the womb of obedience. Every conception of obedience will lead to delivery of the blessing of the land. Wise people always look for instructions to comply with. Because from the passage we read, you see, if and then, if and then, if you will do this, then God will do that. No space for prayer. The more you obey, you discover the less you pray. Most people are attempting to use prayer to cover up for their disobedience. And as a matter of fact, all answers to prayer always conclude with an instruction. And once you comply with the instruction, you'll find yourself enjoying the blessing. Every instruction from God is a test that leads to change of levels in the land. The land contains so many laws, commandments, commandments, all the commandments, all the instructions. Access to that land doesn't grant automatic enjoyment. 
Because somebody may be in the land, like many people are in church today, who are still suffering. And what are they suffering for? They are suffering simply for their disobedience. If you go to a great nation with great treasures, you may only exist there in the prison. Why? For breaking the law of the land. If a Nigerian go to America, for instance, and end up in the prison, he is in America, but he is not enjoying America. So somebody may be in the land and not enjoy the land. The linkage to enjoying the land is your obedience. Your obedience. Obedience attracts God. Disobedience repels God. Obedience is a line, the line between enjoyment and suffering. We saw in the final passage that we read, it said, I lay before you this commandment. Obey it and be blessed. Disobey it and be cursed. In case somebody is wondering, why am I cursed? You need to quickly check. Are there things God told me to do that I'm not doing? What then is obedience from this passage? We try to restrict our definition of obedience to the passage that we have read. Verse 22 of Deuteronomy chapter 11. If ye shall diligently keep, please take note of the word keep, all these commandments which I command you, and to do them, take note of the word also do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, Take note of that as well. What is obedience? Please note first that God's commandment is the subject of man's obedience. So obedience can be as in number one, keeping God's precepts. Keep all his commandment. There is the keeping aspect of obedience. Keeping his precepts. That is, responding to the written commandment. We have the written commandment and we have the spoken commandment. We have the logos of the word, which is the written commandment. The voice of the Lord in the book. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 and 2 said, It shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. He's talking about the voice of God in the book, in the commandment. To observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day. That the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the heart. You won't need to pray for it. He will do it because of your obedience and all these blessings. Not some. If you obey all this, then all these blessings shall come to you. The extent of our obedience determines the extent of our blessing. All these commandments will come to you and overtake you. So, if you follow instruction the blessing will flow into your life. Flow of blessing is measured by following the commandment of the Lord. The laws you follow determines the blessings that will flow. So number one definition of obedience is keeping God's precept. Remember the scripture say precept upon precept. Line upon line, talking about the word of God. The book in your hand is a book of commandment. Number two definition of obedience is doing his word. Doing his instructions. 
That is compliance with the rhema of the word. There are things not written in this book, although in line with this book, which God may be speaking to you, they come as instructions to us. Instruction came to Abraham. Get thee out of your father's house. And immediately he arose. Instruction came to Isaac. Do not go down to Egypt. Stay here and I will bless you. And in one year, his fortune changed. Somebody is wondering, I'm waiting for the day when the Lord will speak to me and give me instruction. Don't ask for it. Do the logo first. God cannot trust you with instruction when you have not adhered to his precepts. It is the doing of the instructions that we refer to as obedience. And number three from that passage, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, remember it talks about keeping the commandment, Number two, doing the instructions. And number three, walking in all his ways. Walking in all his ways. That talks about following God as a lifestyle. Following God as a lifestyle. That is the dimension of obedience that Peter responded to when Jesus said, Come, follow me, and I will make you. Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 to 22. Come, follow me, and I will make you. Obedience to his precepts, to his instructions, and to all his ways is the demand for enjoying the benefits of this land. However, our obedience must be enriched. And quickly we looked at how to enrich your obedience, how to maximize your obedience, how to make your obedience profitable. Number one, willingness. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. What empowers our obedience is willingness. If ye be willing, and that will result into obedience, willing people don't have difficulty obeying God. At the root of disobedience is unwillingness. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat, not you may eat. It's automatic, it's a natural sequence. You shall eat the good of the land. You won't pray for the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land. Willingness makes obedience easy. So if you should pray any prayer at all, it is a prayer for God to give you a willing heart. Lord, baptize me with willingness to obey your word. Paul the Apostle speaking, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. The reward of eating the fruit of the land. But if against my will, even though I do it, there will be no reward. Don't obey God unwillingly. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. If they are be forced, a willing mind, a willing mind, it is accepted according to that which a man had and not according to that which Jesus not have. God gains nothing from your obedience. It is you who gains everything for your obedience. God does not gain from your obedience. It is you who gains everything for your obedience. If they are be forced, 
a willing mind. So willingness is number one companion of obedience. Number two, prompt obedience. Every instruction of God is tied to time. And in the word of God's servant, if you miss your peak, you end in the pit. God is patient but does not waste time. We must never mistake God's patience for just standing there. He is patient, but he does not waste time. Once God tells you to do something, he gives you an ample time. The moment it is not done, it is late, even if you do it later. So it's not enough to be willing. It's important to be prompt. Abraham is a great example here. Chapter 12 of Genesis, 1 to 3, God told him to move. Verse 4, the Bible tells us, Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken. Abraham departed. There was no waste of time. In chapter 17, 10 to 24, circumcise yourself. And the same, same day, not the following day, the same, same day, God's instruction is like a sharp knife. If you don't quickly apply it, it loses its effect. Zest is lost when we delay in responding to God's commandment. Zeal becomes when, when we don't quickly respond to what he commands us to do. We are at our best when we obey God. We are at our best, the best of grace, the best of anointing, the best of strength comes at the point of obedience. And we saw in chapter 22 of Genesis also, from verse 1 all the way to 18, the Lord spoke to him, get up. He came to give him a test, and he answered, here am I, to show his willingness. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. Take him for a sacrifice. And early in the morning, Abraham rose. Early in the morning, early in the morning, he rose up took everything God told him to take. Prompt obedience. We know what happened to Abraham. Up to now, a generational blessing and reference point. Number three. Full obedience. Remember number one, willful or willing, prompt. And number three, full obedience. Get him back to Abraham. God told him, take your son. He took the son. Take him for sacrifice. He took the wood. He took the knife. Full obedience. He took the fire. He took everything that God asked him to take. Half obedience is same as full disobedience. God cannot be mocked. He cannot be deceived. He knows you're lying down, you're sitting up. He knows how you are scheming in your mind what you would decide to do and what not to do. Half disobedience is a risk because it will lead to rebellion. And rebellion is treated as the sin of witchcraft tree. See how this young man, the king, the first king in Israel, lost his place. Saul, for Samuel chapter 15 from verses 1 to 11, God commanded them to go and destroy the Amalekites and not spare any of them. And he returned with bleating of sheep and the king Agag was speared. And Samuel came and said, hey, Saul, why are you not told to destroy all the people and their cattle and everything? And Samuel said, I have, I mean, Saul said, I have obeyed the commandment of the Lord. 
I have obeyed. He obeyed halfway. It was not full. He lost his kingdom for it. May none of us lose our place in the land. <laughs> Lift up your hand and ask God to give you the spirit to obey him fully. Full obedience. In Jesus' precious name. Number four. Way. To make our obedience profitable is delightsomely. Delightsomely. Again, we saw how Abraham said he was going to sacrifice his son and he said, I and the Lord will go yonder to worship the Lord. 22 verse 5 of Genesis. We will go and worship the Lord. It was a delight, not a burden to obey God. In order to avoid any sympathy and opposition, he didn't tell his wife. He was so delighted to go to sacrifice the son. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 1, 1, 2, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. Delighted. Delighted. One who is waiting to hear God say something. There are people whose heart pant every day with fear of what God may tell them to do. They live at the edge. Because they are not delighted in God. And there are others who say, Lord, whatever you say, I'm ready to do. God's servant said one day he was worshiping the Lord, just giving him glory and waiting for what God will say. And the Lord said to him, my son, what did you bring for me? What do I bring for God? What do I have to give to God? And God said to him, your salary. And immediately delightsomely gave it up to God. May each of us here receive grace for delight some obedience. <laughs> Number five, joyful obedience, especially in serving God. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and 48. Delight. Joyful obedience. Because thou servest the Lord the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things in the land. He said, therefore shall thou serve your enemies which the Lord shall send against you in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Say with me, God forbid. So there must be joyful obedience at all times. And the last one, obedience must be tireless. There is no day we are going to graduate from obeying God's command. Tireless. On a daily basis, on hourly basis, look at the story of Abraham. The first one, Genesis 12. Second one, Genesis 17. Third one that brought him eventually into the covenant, chapter 22. And by chapter 24, Abraham had become rich in all things. In all things. Be tireless. In obeying the word of the Lord, either as it comes to us in logo or as it comes in Rema. Be tireless in following the Lord every day of your life. That is the key to becoming a giant in the land. May every one of us this morning receive a willing heart. Receive promptness of the spirit. Receive a heart to fully obey God. Receive a heart to delight humbly and joyfully obey God. In the name of Jesus. Now, even though obedience is a choice, again from our text, in chapter 11 of Deuteronomy, verses 26 to 28. Behold, I said before you this day, a blessing and a cause. Every time God says, he says something before us, he's leaving us to make our choice. Is leaving us to make our choice. I said before you, if you obey, you will be blessed. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, and a curse if you will not obey. It's a choice. But we should please understand this morning that that choice must be powered Knowing fully well that both obedience 
and disobedience have spiritual root. Both obedience and disobedience have spiritual root. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, the Bible talks about the spirit of obedience. And you are taken quickened, who are dead in trespasses and in sin, wherein in the past, in time past, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. There is a spirit of disobedience. If that spirit is hanging around any of us this morning, it is destroyed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it is the spirit of headiness. The spirit that rebels. The spirit that argues. The spirit that rationalizes. The spirit of obedience makes explanation. The spirit of disobedience rationalizes, analyzes until it results in paralysis. That was the spirit that destroys all. That spirit will never catch up with any of us. <laughs> the spirit of disobedience, which now walketh in the children of this world. But we also have the spirit of obedience according to Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 26, which God promised to pour upon his people and which I believe is pouring upon each and every one of us this morning. Moreover, I will make a covenant with them I need to get that verse right it says it will send to us the spirit that will make us to obey God that is that spirit that helps us to obey God it drives you every time God speaks to you the spirit comes upon you to make you willing and eager to obey him. May we all receive that spirit this morning. May we all receive that spirit this morning. Thank you, studio. Ezekiel chapter 26, I mean, chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. So may I receive it. And a new spirit will I put within you. Say, I receive it. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Somebody raise your hand and pray for that spirit upon you right now. Pray for that spirit upon you right now. Pray for that spirit upon you right now. Pray upon your life. That spirit right now. In Jesus precious name we are prayed. And finally, what are the benefits of obedience in the land? Again, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 23, all the way to 25. Number one is dominion in the land. Verse 23 and 24. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. No sweat, no effort from you. He said he will drive them. For your obedience, he said he will drive them. And ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. <laughs> on what account? On the account of your obedience. On the account of your obedience. God's servant said, obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. It's priceless. You can't compare what it costs you to obey to what you will get from it. Number two is supernatural triumph. Over your enemies. Verse 25. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land. That he shall tread upon as he has said unto you. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. He said when your obedience is fulfilled. You will avenge all disobedience. You won't need to sweat to win any battle because your obedience is full and filled. Say loud amen, somebody. Yeah. Make that amen louder. Yeah. Make it louder yet. Yeah. The spirit of obedience is released upon every one of us today. 
the spirit of disobedience is cast away from our lives today. As a result of obedience, Abraham became a generational reference. He became a friend of God for simply obeying God. And because we are seeds of Abraham, if we do the works of Abraham, we shall enjoy the blessing of Abraham. This morning, the spirit of obedience that will make you and I to maximize the blessedness of the land is released upon us. Rise to your feet with me and take that grace right now. Take that grace right now. Before you pray for things to be happening in your life, pray for the spirit of obedience to be released upon you. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Now, by the unction that backs up this commission, I decree the release of the spirit of obedience upon everyone. No one leaves this prophetic feast with the spirit of disobedience. So shall it be. And everyone who believes, he will enjoy the blessing of the land, say a louder amen. With the